Hey everyone, in this video, it's all about maintaining a healthy reef through water testing. I'm gonna go through every test that I do, how to do the test and why it's important. So let's get to it. All right, so here's the lineup of tests that I do every week. Now these of course aren't the only water tests out there. You're gonna be using some other tests if you're starting a tank, but this is for an established tank. So let's get into these. I like to use the HANA salinity checker, the HANA ultra low phosphate checker, the HANA alkalinity checker, the HANA nitrate checker, the salifert calcium tester, and the salifert magnesium tester. If you notice that your corals aren't opening up or not looking the same, the first thing you should check is the salinity and see if that number has changed. I like to measure the specific gravity or salinity in terms of natural seawater, which is around 1.025 or 35 ppt. Anywhere between 1.024 to 1.026 is fine as long as that number is consistent. That's really the key here is to keep it steady or if you need to change the number, do it slowly over time. So as you can see, I like to keep mine around 1.025 and just a side note that you wanna calibrate the HANA checker about every 30 days. Next up is nitrate and phosphate. They kinda of go hand in hand. Nitrates occur as organic waste breaks down. In the past, people have said to shoot for zero nitrates and zero phosphates because we kind of consider these variables as water pollution and that's why you want to keep them low, but we have found that you need some of these for corals to survive, so don't keep them at zero. So for nitrates, we're going to use the HANA checker and I'm looking for a number that's less than 20 ppm. To start off, you push the button on the checker while it's empty, that's C1. Then we're gonna fill the vial with 10 milliliters of the salt water that you're testing. So you're looking for the bottom of that curb, also known as the meniscus, to sit at that line on the vial. Put that in the checker and push the button again. Then cut open the packet and put the contents in. Close the cap and you're gonna keep shaking for two minutes. After those two minutes, you're gonna put it in the checker again, hold down the button and you have seven more minutes to go. All right, and the results are in. We're at a 1.7 ppm for nitrate, which is a little bit on the low side, to be honest. I like to see a closer to 10 to 15, but this means that I need to increase my nitrates by feeding the corals more, feeding the fish more, or by turning off the protein skimmer for a few days and see how that works. The HANA phosphate checker is similar to the nitrate, but there are some differences. Go ahead and push the button to turn it on. When you see it say C1, then it's ready for you to fill up the vial to the 10 milliliter level and put that into the checker and push the button again. When you see C2, it's time to open up the packet and pour in the contents. Now this is where it's a little bit different. So for two minutes, you're gonna shake, but you're not gonna shake aggressively like the nitrate. Then when you're all done with that, you put it in the checker and hold down the button. It's gonna do a three minute countdown and then you're done. So for phosphates, anything under 0.1 ppm is ideal for a mixed reef tank. Higher levels of phosphates can hinder coral growth and lead to unwanted nuisance algae in the aquarium. All right, for mine, the phosphates are showing 0.06 ppm. So that's under the 0.1 ppm and of course above zero. I'm only gonna do the 10% water change that I always do on my maintenance. If the nitrates and phosphates were higher, I would do a bigger, more aggressive water change. But because they're right where I wanna be, I'm gonna stick with my 10% weekly water change and I'm not gonna add any extra chemicals or anything to help bring these numbers down. So the next three elements kind of go hand in hand and we test these to make sure that we have the parameters we need for good coral growth, especially something with a coral skeleton. When we're doing these tests, we're looking at the mineral densities and that's why it's so important to have the correct salinity because that directly affects it as well. You want a proper ionic balance between calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium to form calcium carbonate. So let's test alkalinity first with the HANA checker. We're gonna turn on the unit and wait for it to display C1. Then we're gonna fill it with 10 milliliters of salt water from our aquarium and put it into the tester. Push the button again and it will display C2. We're gonna take the syringe and fill up one milliliter of the reagent and we're gonna add that to our salt water. Once you put that milliliter of reagent in, you're gonna gently flip it back and forth five times. Put it back in a checker and push the button. You're not gonna hold the button down like the previous checkers. This one's really fast and easy, and here you go. My alkalinity is showing 9.1 dKH, and that's a little bit higher than I wanna be. At Worldwide Corals, we like to be in the 8.3 to the 8.9 range. Last week, it was at 9.0, so I see it trending upward. I'm gonna slightly lower the amount that the doser is putting out so it doesn't climb any higher. 
All right, for calcium, I'm going with the Salifert test. Now, if you've used this test before, you'll notice that it's changed recently to a newer version with less steps. So let's go over it. You're gonna to wanna to fill the tube with two milliliters of the salt water that you're testing. You're gonna add one spoon of the CA-1, but don't mix it yet. Then you're gonna get your syringe and fill it to the one milliliter mark with the CA-2 reagent. The next step is you're gonna actually put 0.6 milliliters of the reagent into the tube so that the bottom of the syringe piston is at 0.4 milliliters. Go ahead and swirl this for five seconds so that you see a pink color. Then you're gonna add one to two drops in swirl and you're looking for a change from pink to blue. So by looking at the syringe and seeing what's left and going over to the chart, my calcium is at 480 ppm. And at Worldwide Corals, we like to keep it between 440 and 480, so I'm right at the higher limit. All right, so now it's time to do my last weekly test, and that's magnesium. Back to the Salifert test kit again. Putting in two milliliters of tank water into the vial. Add five drops of MG-1. Then add one spoonful of MG-2 powder and swirl for 10 seconds. Then we're gonna draw out one milliliter in the syringe of MG-3 reagent. Then you're going to want to do one to two drops and swirl. Keep doing that and you're looking for a color change of gray or blue. Now if you've done this test a lot and you know your magnesium levels are upper in the higher range, you could put up to 80% of what's in your syringe into the vial. Shake that and do the drops from there. And for my results, I actually emptied the entire syringe into the vial and then we hit our color change. Since there's nothing left in the syringe, going over to the chart, looking for 0, 0.00, it shows 1500 ppm. We like to shoot somewhere between 1400 and 1480 ppm. Last week it was at 1470 and it's trending upward, which means I need to lower the amount of magnesium through the doser. So just a side note, if you see coralline algae growing in your tank a lot, that's a really good sign. It probably means that you have those three elements kind of dialed in. You still wanna test, see where you're at and make slow adjustments from there. All right, so that's it for my weekly water testing routine. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. Also consider subscribing if you haven't so we can continue making these videos for you. Leave a comment below, we read them all and try our best to reply to them and we'll see you on the next video.